Okay, let's get going then. So welcome everyone to our webinar. We're delighted to have Andy Pope from PC Futures joining us today and he's going to be talking about our experience in turning ideas into reality. So that sounds like a really exciting topic to be looking at for the next half an hour or so. If you have any questions during the webinar, there's a Q&A button which you can press. You can ask the question and then we'll work through those at the end of the webinar. Um, otherwise, over to you, Andy. I'm really looking forward to your session. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, yeah, as Ruth said, this is um, just really our experience in uh, taking ideas that people come to us with and kind of turning them into reality. Um, so I'll, I'll go through that in a little bit more detail. Um, so we're going to do, uh, first of all, we're just going to run through a little bit about who PC Futures are. Um, just, you know, get that advert in there. Um, then we'll, I'll run through the three simple questions that we tend to ask uh, as we're looking at a project. Um, we'll then look at some examples of uh, projects. We'll just summarize it all and then some questions and hopefully I've got the answers. If not, I'm sure someone will um, and we'll go from there. So I must remember to press the next slide button. So PC Futures, we've been going since 2014. Um, we specialize in WordPress uh, websites and custom software and uh, mobile app development. Uh, those are our things we do. We get involved in lots of other things, a bit of IT support and everything else. Um, and I'll tell you, we've got a broad experience in both technology and in business, both uh, Craig and I. Um, we've been uh, involved in businesses for, for many years. So we've got that experience of running a business and also uh, with technology that kind of puts us in a, a nice position to be able to um, help people across the spectrum. This slide's a bit corny, um, but bear with me. Um, I think it's, it's nice to know what we like doing. So there's plenty of things that people come to us and say, can you do this? And we kind of mm, don't really like doing that. But there's lots of things that we do actually really love doing. And um, they are when someone comes to us and says, I've got a bit of a problem, can you help? Um, and they're normally ones that, that we kind of, you know, I won't say get out of bed for, but they're the ones that we enjoy. Um, and in particular, we love, um, looking at someone's idea and then looking back six months later or three months later or however long later and saying yeah that's now real that it, it exists there it is and uh, there's even better when you see it on the side of a van or on a post or something like that and you think yeah I remember when those guys came in so that's really good um, this is definitely corny but we do enjoy it when we finish something on time and on budget I've worked in IT businesses before where that was always a goal and sometimes is achieved. A lot of the time it isn't achieved, but we tend to be fairly strict, certainly on budget. We tend to say that's a fixed price. Let's work to that. Um, and to do that, we need to be fairly focused on the time as well. So most of the time we're on time and on budget, but there you go. Something to aim for. Um, we spend a lot of time looking after someone's dream. So, um, They've been kind enough to share that with us and able, enabled us to build a solution for them in some way. Um, and it's only right and proper that we then take the care to look after it, uh, support it as it should be, and just spend the time as we should do looking after it. So enough about us as a business. Um, these are uh, three things that we tend to ask people uh, when they come to us with an idea. Um, and it tends to just kind of uh, help us focus on what needs to be done or what they need to do to be able to, you know, get this going, get the idea going and turn it into some kind of reality. So the first question you ask is why? Um, wh why? Why have you come up with this idea? What, what problem are you trying to solve? Um, will people buy it? Um, and is there anything out there already that does it? And if not, why not? Um, it kind of sounds obvious, but um, although you may have a good idea, others may not agree with you and so therefore may not buy it from you. So it's always worthwhile 
checking back and finding out why you think it's a good idea and and if you can kind of almost sell it to us then we're on board you know that's the first first hurdle um the thing about uh, we hear a lot, well, no one else is doing this. Well, there may be a reason why no one else is doing this. Um, we, we had this chap come into us who uh, wanted to create a mobile app that overlaid the top of Google search engine. So we're already thinking, oh, this is going to be um, fun. Um, with voice software. So you can say, Google, tell me where there are places of interest in Barry St. Edmunds, for example. And we thought, hold on a minute, I don't know how much research he's done, but I'm pretty sure something like this exists already. So we showed him, OK, Google, Siri, Alexa. And, you know, he'd gone fairly down the road. He would kind of borrowed some money off of his parents and, and all sorts. And we, we had to kind of burst his bubble a little bit. But if he'd have, if, that's why we asked that question, because there's no way that we would have got involved in that and wasted the guy's money when there was something out there already that did it. Um, so why is always a good question to ask first. Um, second one we ask is who. So um, this is where actually you might want to think to yourself, look, I actually need to bring in some external marketing resource to help me here, especially if that's not your day job and it isn't everyone's. And they can get involved in doing the whole kind of um, marketplace analysis for you, SWOT analysis, PEST and whatever all the other bits and pieces are. It's a long time since I, I did that. Um, but it is definitely a way of uh, just looking at what that market is, what that target market looks like, and what is important to them. So for example, um, we're working with a client who's building a, a social media platform. Um, very similar, he, he hates it when we say it's similar to Facebook, he doesn't like that at all, because privacy is at its heart so it's it's different because there are no adverts it's a it's a, a paid for app and it's all based on um it's all based on uh, privacy so that's he felt the target market that he wants to aim at that is the important thing so he's done his research around that you've also got to look at the size of the market as well we we had uh, a guy come to us with an idea for um, a stock market app um, selling and buying shares and they would have kind of I won't say insider information I don't think you're allowed to have insider information but this had hints and tips and various um, uh, you know strategies in in the app and people would pay five pound a year to have the app and uh, subscribe to it and we worked out that to cover the costs of just producing the app let alone everything else and for him to earn some money out of it, he'd have to have about 95% market share of that niche that he was after. So sometimes it's a great idea and you can see it, but there just isn't a market there for it, or it's just not right now for it. So always asking the question, who is, is worthwhile doing? And the third question we ask is how? Um, this is actually where we tend to get the majority of knockbacks isn't the right way but people will say oh okay i'll go away and think about this because you know the emphasis is on you so it's your idea how are you going to market it how will you pay for it how will your customers buy it what do you want to make out of it um how do you know if it's been a success? What, what are you going to put in place to to say, great, we've hit our targets here? Um, you know, and these are just some of the how questions. And we 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 see a lot of people that uh, we 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 did a project for um, for someone recently, well, a couple of years ago now, and um, it got to the point where it was this part of the process of okay, so how are you going to market this what are you going to do when it's built and you need to send it to market and people are going to phone up or people are going to say can you add me to this list or do this or do that and they didn't want they just wanted to come up with the idea be the idea and the money person and not have any involvement in how it actually ran um and it 
it just fell flat because that wasn't part they hadn't spent the time thinking about the how they'd spent a lot of time thinking about the why and the who and they'd got that pretty much spot on but the how was where they really were let down um and in the end it just didn't go anywhere because they weren't they didn't want to quit their day job for it um which is fair that's fine it's up to them so we just didn't feel it was worthwhile going much further with it but we have seen plenty of people that have done the opposite and said yeah no i'm, I'm really keen on that so that kind of leads me into the the next part which is just talking through some examples of um, clients that we've done some work for don't worry it's not going to be techie it's very much just based on the the three questions um, so this first one uh, we call him the realist because he came to us he knew what he wanted from the very start he knew what he wanted he just needed help getting to where he needed to be so he knows why it will work in the marketplace because he spent the time doing that. Um, he knows the market very well because he's in that market already and he, and he sees it as a need that his own business has, but also that other businesses that he networks in also require this as well. So, you know, that he felt that there was definitely a market for it, uh, which he knows. He would actually spent a lot of time putting together some really good plans for how this was all going to work. Um, down to screenshots of, um, you know, this is how I want the app to look and this is how I've, I've imagined the icon will be and all that sort of thing. So, you know, he definitely spent some time. This was his baby. This is his dream. Um, he'd gone out and got himself a budget for the work that needed to be done. Um, so that was great. We knew what we had to play with. Um, he knew that he would have to put some effort into selling as well. So um, it, He'd, had, he'd got an arrangement with another company to, um, to do some marketing for him around it. So as soon as the app was launched, there'd be some marketing going out before that and marketing to coincide with the release and then ongoing marketing and sales approach from there. So that's really good. And he's driven to succeed because the business he's doing, he doesn't want to be doing forever. And he sees this new opportunity as his nest egg, as his retirement fund. So for us, this was a real success because it met, we, we got the answers for the three questions that we really wanted. Um, he was happy that we'd asked the questions and that we were on the same page as him. We were bought into the project at very early do doors because we understood how important it was to him. So all in all, it worked out really well. So good project. Next one, not so great. Um, I've called this guy the dreamer. He won't mind me saying that. Um, I, that's as far as I'll go about naming who it is. But um, this idea that he had was outside of his area of expertise and his comfort zone. It, it was kind of a eureka, a eureka moment come to him and said, yeah, I think this will really work. I think it will work. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get involved in it until much, much later in the project. Um, and looking back on it, hindsight is a wonderful thing. He'd definitely not done his homework. He hadn't done enough homework to see whether there was um, really the gap in the market for this, um, really whether it was a problem that needed solving. Um, so he hadn't spent a lot of time around that. Um, he'd left an awful, awful lot of the decisions up to the tech partner to resolve. So, uh, excuse me, every time there was uh, something, oh, we're not sure how this should work, I don't know, I'll leave it to you. Um, he'd lost control of the finances. There were just invoices going out the door, left, right and centre for work. Um, he'd chosen the wrong tech partner by, you know, you could just tell that they were just in it for the money. The taxi meter was clicking away and he was just paying the bills. Um, and by the time it got to a point where he wanted to get it to market, the market had moved on a little bit and other competitors had come to market with comparable products. And so suddenly he was kind of left out in the cold. Um, and he'd signed a large contract with this, uh, with this developer and they were still after their pound of flesh. Um, so we had to work very hard with him to, to get him out of the mess that he was in. He'd spent a lot of money. We're talking, you know, close to 150,000 pounds on this, a lot of money. Um, and bless him, we, we, we got him out of it 
um, we've put him on the right track. Um, we've sent him away to think about how he wants to, uh, this to go forward. Um, think about the three questions. What do they mean to him? What, do they, what does it mean for his product? How can it change to suit? And obviously we'll dip in and help where we can from that. But we feel that a lot of the drive needs to come from the actual um, client himself uh, from there. So we call that a victory out the hands of defeat. That's a Pyrrhic victory, maybe. Um, but why wouldn't we? The third one, um, the chancer. Um, yeah, he kind of came into us and he had this vague idea of what he wanted to do. And, um, you know, he just really thought about it. And, and it wasn't on the back of an envelope. I'll give him credit. He had actually written it on a piece of paper rather than just on an envelope. But that was about as far as it went. He wasn't sure how much it was going to cost. Wasn't sure who would be interested in it. Needed some help in actually put, firming up the idea in more detail let alone any of the real nitty gritty and the real detail of, of how this product was going to work. He was just going to leave that all to us to do. So there was no sales plan. How are you going to sell it? Well, it will just go on the app store and someone will buy it. Well, okay. But where we really got the the warning signs was, is that he, he hadn't thought of a budget for this at all. He'd be able to get money if he needed to get money, but would we be interested in doing a kind of a, um, a, a share option where we'd and we've done that with a few where we've we've been impressed enough to sit there and say to ourselves okay well actually if we get in at the bottom here maybe this is a, a you know a, a, could be very lucrative for all of us and so the skin's in the game from us as well but this guy didn't want to put any of, of his own capital in it was all down to us to take the risk on uh, which we just weren't prepared to do and we walked away, A, because of the, the financial risk to us, but B, because we just didn't see this project going to go anywhere. It was just going to die. Um, it, we, we just saw that um, he hadn't spent any of that time, as I said. And so it was just going to fail. Um, even if he'd had the money, it would have failed and he would have lost a lot of money and then come to us and said, I've wasted all this money. So we, we cut that off very early on from there so there's three examples of someone that got it right someone that eventually got it right and someone that just we got it right I think um, <laughs> by walking away um, all because of the three questions if you ask the three questions a we get to understand what the people are like and what and how advanced they are with their ideas and it helps us turn them into reality because we know that there's meaning behind it and there's research behind it. So things that we've learned on the way through, um, definitely not all good ideas, sorry, not all ideas are good ideas. Um, we've had plenty of people come to us like the uh, voice activation in Google. What a brilliant idea. Um, unfortunately, someone's done that already. So they just hadn't uh, researched it enough um, and some ideas you just think yeah no that's that's pretty daft it's only a problem that you have and no one else has but you know you've got to start somewhere and it's nice and it's good that people are thinking of ideas through this um, rolling your sleeves up that's something that um, certainly in, a, in um, uh, the project I was speaking about earlier where they weren't prepared to, they, they were prepared to put some money on the table and they were prepared to come up with the original idea but that was it design how it was going to work who was going to support it how it was maintained who manages it on a day-to-day -day basis how you're going to get customers if you're not prepared to roll your sleeves up and do that well you know prepare for failure it doesn't have to cost a fortune uh, especially when we're talking about software development. Um, we, we've recently just completed a project for someone who we quoted, I was gutted when I found out, um, <laughs> we quoted four times less than someone in London had for the same project. Um, I did jokingly say, oh, can I go back and uh, change the price a little bit? But 
you know, he's, he's more than happy and we're very happy actually. Um, it's got what, you know, it's a fair price that we, we charged him. So he was just really surprised that, and I think he was, he saw the bright lights and the city of London and thinking, oh, this is where all the tech is. And, you know, there's us sitting around the corner from where he lived in Ipswich, um, happy to help. In my opinion, selling is harder than developing. Um, selling your idea to someone in the first place, whether that be someone that's going to give you finance um, or come in on the project, whether it's the developer or whether it's actually after you've got the, the, uh, the, the, the idea into a reality and you need to actually go out to market and sell it. You'll be surprised how much that actually costs. And in my opinion, that costs probably just as much as it does to develop the project. Um, by the time you've paid out for, um, for everything that goes into a, a decent uh, sales campaign. I mean, just, just think of uh, like the silly apps that you get, like um, gone are the days of things like Angry Birds. I'll use that as an example. Angry Birds, when that came to the market, there was hardly any advertising for it. And it just went up into the app store. Whoever created it had spent some money on development, but it just snowballed and became the success that it became but since then if you notice there's a hell of a load of adverts for games for t tv adverts for mobile apps these days and that's because it isn't the same market you don't get that viral you know snowball effect that happens anymore so you have to invest in marketing and selling um, and i think that's the harder the harder bit Certainly from our point of view, we found that it's okay to say no. It's okay to turn around to someone and say, we don't want to be involved in this. And it isn't just from the money point of view. It's also from, we just don't think you've quite got it right. What we've actually found a lot of is as soon as people think, I need a mobile app. So we speak to them and say, have you got a website? No, we haven't even got a website. Okay, so... Instead of spending all the money on a mobile app, maybe your website would be the first port of call. And then if you still need a mobile app, go from there. Because they just see a mobile app as a way of getting their name known. So we're, we're happy to talk to people and say, no, that isn't the right thing. I should really have put no, but um, maybe there's a different way. But also, if you've got the idea and you're going through the process, it's OK to turn around and say, no, I just don't think this is going to work or I don't like the way you're handling this part of it so I want to move on that's fine next thing research you've got to research um, you've got to look at everything there's nothing worse than getting to the point where you're about to put some finance on the table and someone comes along and says oh did you know that so and so over in blah blah has just produced something that does exactly the same as you do um, you, you might be happy with that but you know research find out everything you need to know about making your idea a success. I think knowing your end game means that you will have a target to aim at. If you know that you want to get a million subscribers or um, you want to sell it for five million pounds in three years time, whatever, you, whatever goal you have, stick to that, work to that end game. And I think then that will give everyone the perspective. And don't be afraid to share that as part of your idea and part of your vision. And if you've done all those things, and if you can answer those three questions, I think really all that's left to do is to go for it and turn your idea into reality. And, you know, a lot of us are sitting at home. A lot of us are still working and we're still busy. So, you know, God bless that we're still busy. It's good to see. Um, but when you're sitting at home, you tend to think of things and actually there's no good time to come up with ideas sometimes you sit there all day wanting to come up with an idea and then suddenly you're in the bath and you have that eureka moment so you know if you're thinking about something and you've done your research go for it at least start the process of looking at how much it would cost to turn your idea into reality at least start it you can always say no halfway down the line don't be afraid to do that but unless you go for it you'll never know and that's it. Um, thank you for your time. I've got no idea how long I've rambled on floor. Probably not long enough, but shorter the better, I say. Um, so now I guess we're just open to any questions. So I think this is where Ruth um, does some magic and does some various bits. Yeah, so if anybody has any questions they would like to ask Andy about anything he's talked about in the session, 
you can ask them through the Q&A section on the webinar um, and we will, they will pop up in our window and we'll answer them. But one of the questions I had to ask Andy, um, you mentioned that sometimes it's okay for projects not to get, you know, get through the process. How many do you have that kind of don't get over the line and why? What are the general reasons that either you don't take them on or that they don't complete? Um, yeah, so I would say in the last uh, three years, we've probably turned away maybe three projects that we weren't interested in. One of them was for kind of ethical reasons. Um, we didn't want to be involved in, um, in, in producing some kind of betting app. Um, we didn't feel that, that was something that we'd be comfortable with. Um, one of them was because they just didn't, they didn't have answers to the questions. Um, and I just didn't feel that they were, um, they were going to be able to uh, help us with the project. A lot was going to be left to us. Um, uh, and the third one was simply because they got halfway through and decided they'd had enough and wanted to do something completely different, um, which was fine. Paid us for paid us up to date and and off they went. Um, and we've only ever had, I, th I think, probably two projects in our time. One of them a web project where they don't tend to stop; they tend to pause, and some pause for quite some time. Especially when you ask questions like, "I need some content from you. Can you write about what you do? Tell me about your services. Tell me about this. Tell me about that." Then all of a sudden it becomes quite difficult for them to um, kind of put together um, a full a full kind of idea of, uh, of, of what they want. And that tends to pause for quite some time. So does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, that does. So we've got a couple of other questions as well. Do your customers get upset if you tell them that their idea isn't a runner or are they grateful? Uh, um, I think it all depends how we um, how we uh, answer that question. Um, so we don't tend to be as blunt as that. Sometimes we'll um, uh, you know suggest that maybe they need to think about it in a slightly different way. Um, don't get me wrong. I mean we we're a business and and we want to obviously take every project on, but you've got to be pragmatic and we don't want to see other small business owners wasting money. So typically if we frame it in that way, that, um, yeah, we just don't think at the moment, this is going to, there's enough here for us to be going on. Normally it's enough to go away and say, can you give us more detail? Can you provide more detail here? We haven't got enough for us to fully understand or fully, um, get behind what you want to do. Um, and if someone's committed, they'll then go away and actually think about it. And normally that's enough for them to, um, to think of different reasons or different things um, and come back and amend their idea in such a way. So we haven't had anyone that's got upset with us. Some that um, we, we had to kind of uh, go around the houses a little bit with and explaining why we weren't going to get involved. But, um, but none that have really got upset with us. I think it's, it's just the way that we say it rather than confrontational. Yeah, that communication is so important when it's your baby, isn't it? When yeah. someone's saying, yeah, absolutely. Oh, maybe you yeah. haven't quite thought this through. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. quite painful to hear sometimes. Yes. And Sue has said, yeah, they tend to be grateful with me too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got a question from Alan Scott. Is content often a problem for you? In brackets, I'm interested as a content provider. Yeah, what it is, is it's not necessarily writing the content. It's when you ask someone a question. So we had it with a web project recently where we said, okay, well, you know, you want to change your website. You want to do something different. Explain your services to us because I can't quite work out the structure of how things are formulated and, and how you do it. And they had to go away and they really scratched their head because they it's not necessarily that they can't write it. It's the fact that they don't really know where to start. So, you know, they're starting with a blank piece of paper. And then, so when you start coaching them and saying, okay, so is this a top level product? 
and then this is a subsidiary of that oh yes yeah and then they get the idea of kind of uh, of working out what what it is but but yeah i mean copy is always an issue we, we we do work with a couple of copywriters so but we're always happy to talk to others but um yeah when you ask people to write about themselves they it, it tends to take some time for them to come through um with that uh, for whatever reason maybe it's our our way of being very self-deprecating but it's difficult to write nice things about us sometimes <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, I do. Speaking of nice things, I uh, had a message from Graham Barton saying we've used PC features and found them excellent. They built our app and we've had several ideas that they have said was not commercially viable. So there's some positive feedback. <laughs> Thanks, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> and Alan says it's a common problem and it's not just for you. Yeah. So that's great. So I had a question um, about where we find ourselves in the current situation. Yep. Do you find that this situation is making it easier for people to come up with these ideas and go through that process? Or is the additional stress um, making that more difficult for people? Have you found anything? Have you any insights on that? Um, so I guess we've had um, a few clients that have used this time uh, in their businesses that I have um, that are shut for whatever reason um, they 've come to us with a few ideas or a few tweaks that they think oh wouldn 't it be nice if we did this or when we go back, I think we should maybe do this instead of that so there 's been a few conversations and that, that I, I see those as ones that have kind of very much circumstantial so we 're in this situation, so we need to think of a way out of it rather than necessarily great forward thinkers that have sat there and thought, okay, well, in 20 years time, this is what I want to be doing. It's more kind of reactive around, right, okay, this is the, this is the situation we're in. If we were to go in lockdown again, what would we do? Um, and so, and so I, yeah, I guess there's, there's that kind of situational ideas that are coming out of the exact same thing. I don't know. I don't think there's ever a good time, I, I, you know, sitting down with a, with a, a glass of wine, maybe in the evening, coming up with all these wonderful ideas. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, they kind of come to you. I tend to find that um, I'm laying in bed and about I wake up at about five in the morning and think, oh, that's a really good idea. And then fall back to sleep and wake up at half past seven thinking, um, I'm sure I had a good idea. So I, I remember once someone saying you should always keep a pad and a pad of paper by the, a, a pad and pen by the side of your bed. So when you wake up with these brain waves, you need to write them down uh, so you remember them in the morning. But I just know I'll get an elbow in the ribs for turning the light on if I did that. But <laughs> you need a pen with a light in it so that you can yeah. write your piece what of a good idea. On, on the. <laughs> there's an idea for you. I think yeah. someone might have already done it though. So. Someone has just also added a uh, point that it's about, um, it's not about being nice and taking money for something you know is going to fail. It's about yeah. that being less money orientated and more ethical. And I think that's yeah. what you were saying. In your yeah, absolutely. Opinion. Yeah. Uh, because ultimately that is going to fail, isn't it? If, if yeah. you do go down that route. Um, yeah. Even if it's just the relationship that fails yeah. and all the products that you're building. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I think, you may get away with it in in if in larger marketplaces, but um, not being a, a a native of Suffolk, you know, I moved here back in '91, so I feel as if I'm just about integrated um, in. But um, it, it's a small marketplace here, and so you soon will get a reputation if you um, if you're just one of these people that just take money and don't really care about how it's delivered or what's delivered or when it's delivered. Um, so I think that's really important, having a decent reputation. We get most of our business through referrals. We don't spend a lot of money on marketing. Um, you know, so a lot we rely on our good name being known. So it's in our interest to make sure that projects work because the last thing we want to do is, oh, don't go to PC Futures. I spent X amount of pounds with them and total waste of money. That's the last thing we want to happen. So, you know, yeah, I guess that's being mercenary, but I think it's also being fair. We'd rather be a fair, we'd rather, well, you've got to pay your mortgage, but, you know, I, I think there's plenty of business around and to be fair and ethical at the same time. I think you can do both. Yeah, definitely. So is there any advice you might have for small business owners 
um, around decision making processes, but to sort of like help them get something to a point where they can then bring it to you as an idea. Yeah. I would say that um, get us involved fairly early. We're happy to um, we're happy to have a cup of coffee, sit down with you and just say, OK, well, this is maybe how you want to start freshing out this idea a little bit more. Um, so we're happy to have a conversation fairly early on. I've got an idea um, and I don't know what to do next. What should I do next? Um, and so we, we do have a lot of those people come to us and it's over time that we say, look, you're not ready to spend any money yet. So don't spend anything. Don't spend any money yet. Go away and think about these areas. Think about doing this. Think about doing that. And they're quite situational. So it depends on what the idea is, depends on what happens next. But it's that research. The first thing I would do is, is, is type into Google. Um, I have a problem blah, 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 um, if it's to solve a particular issue. And just to see whether other people are having the same issue and if there's a product for that. Um, coming from a world of tech support, Google is our, our best technical advisor. You know, whenever there's a problem, find it on Google. Um, you know, and there's always an answer for something. And in the same way with ideas, I think you can pretty much start seeing if other people have, have had the same issue research that is that research just if it's your idea just sit down and start looking at it it doesn't have to cost you anything to take those first exploratory steps to just say talk to someone else and say what a wonderful idea i often think about that when i think of uh, the x factor when um, someone's standing in front of simon cowell and they say my mum says i've got a wonderful voice and um, of course she does and it's the same with ideas so don't don't necessarily go to your wife or your mum because they're going to tell you it's a wonderful idea. Do a bit, a bit more of a dragon's den thing on it. Speak to people that you know are fairly cynical, um, maybe, because if you can impress them, then you know you're onto something. Um, so yeah, you know, try and do a bit of a dragon's den with it. Speak to some people that you know. If you're involved in ISBAR or other networking groups, then you know, speak to some people there that you trust. Um, and, and I would say trust is a really important thing. We're happy to sign NDAs and do whatever. We've never, never had the need to because, again, someone comes to us with a unique idea and suddenly someone else comes up with a unique idea six months later after speaking to us. It looks a bit sus. So, um, you know, we just don't do that. Again, it's not an ethical thing that we would do. So, you know, speak to people that you trust they will help you. They will talk you through that and help you on the right track for coming up with the right idea. That's great. Really great advice, Andy. Thank you so much for sharing all your gems of wisdom with us today. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having um, me. People can get in contact with you by email or phone. Yep. Yep. Um, if they want to organize a one-to-one. -one. Yep. So excellent. Yeah, always happy to have a chat. Okay, fantastic. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you over in the hallway track later. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye.